Again, welcome to Java Programming 1 course. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about Java expressions, uh, such as data conversion, and Java expressions uh, such as uh, arithmetic operations, and also interactive programs, how Java can accept an input from a keyboard or an input from a user. Normally, if we want to get an input from a user using the keyboard, we use the scanner class. We can also get an input from a file system using scanner class with, again, mm -hmm. Java input output file system IO. So we have to import the package name IO or input output package. We will discuss that later on in the course. But in this session, we're going to learn how to get an input from a user using the keyboard. So we use a, a class named scanner. So Java expressions can be arithmetic, arithmetic expressions. And arithmetic expressions, we can use the combination of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and a remainder. Uh, as we know for some program, most programs have a remainder operator. In Java is percent. A remainder means when I divide two numbers, I'm not looking for the answer, but I'm looking for the remainder. So a very simple example is when you divide seven by two, the, the answer will be again three, but we have remainder one. So when I say seven mod loss two, the answer will be one, because when I divide seven by two, the answer is three remainder one. So seven mod loss two is one. Seven mod loss four will be three because when I divide seven by four, the answer is one remainder three. So these are the five arithmetic operators that we are going to use in Java expressions or arithmetic expressions. So we have the first example here. Let's say we divide 14 by three. Here, we should know that 14 the data type is an integer, a whole number is an integer. Three also is an integer. So when you divide two integer values together, the answer you get will be the whole number, which is the integer. So 14 divided by three, the answer should give us four point something, maybe around 4.23. But well, the answer will be only four because the data type is a whole number, int or integer. So divide 14 by three, the answer is four. Now, if I divide 14 by 3.0, then I may get 4.23 something. Now here, we, if I divide eight by 12, since eight is less than 12, the answer will be zero, then remainder eight. But here we are doing only division. So we know the remainder value. So eight divided by 12, if eight is an integer, 12 is integer, the answer will be zero. Now we come to the mod loss operator. 14 mod loss three, we say the answer is two, why? Because when I divide 14 by three, the answer will be four. And four times three is 12. 12 from 14 will be two. So this means if I divide 14 by three, if it's a whole number, the answer will be two. I mean, sorry, the remainder will be two. Here we have a whole number. If I divide 14 by three, the answer will be four. Four times three is 12. 12 from 14 will give me two, so the remainder is two. Now if I divide 18 by 12, the answer was zero. But eight, eight sorry, I mean to say eight. If I divide eight by 12, the remainder is zero. But if we say, eight mod loss 12, which means we are looking for the remainder, then the answer will be eight. So eight divided by 12 is zero, but eight mod loss 12, which means when you divide eight by 12, the remainder will be eight. The answer is zero remainder eight. So this is a quick check. Uh, 12 divided by two, the answer will be a whole number six. 12.0 divided by 2.0, the answer will be 6 by 2 be 6.0 because it's a float or decimal data type. 10 divided by 4, the answer will be 2. 
we don't care about the remainder now. We are doing division. 10 divided by 4.0. Okay, here we have 4.0 now. So we know 4 can go into 10 is 2. You put the point down. You had 0. You get 20. 20 can go into 10 is 2. So what we're trying to say is that here we are going to get a, since it's 4.0, we're going to get an answer of a decimal number or a double. So 10 divided by 4 is 2. 8, 8 can go into 10, remember 2, you had 0. 4 can go into 20, is so 20. So the answer would be 4.5. So we can see that 10 divided by 4, both values are a whole number. The answer was only 2. But 10 divided by 4.0, the answer is 2.5. Same thing here, we have 4 divided by 10. Since 4 is less than 10, the answer will be 0. We are doing only division. Now, 4.0 divided by 10 to be 0 0.4. Because here we have to be concerned with the point now. 12 modulus 3, the answer will be 3 can go into 12 is 4, remember that 0, so the answer will be 0. 10 modulus 3, the answer will be 1. So let's look the answer. So the first one was 6, 6.0 because we have a two decimal values, 2.5 2 because we have at least one decimal value. This is 0. This is 0 0.4 because this is a decimal number. Now here we get 0 because 3 can go into 12 is 4 remnant 0. And 10 modulus 3 will be 1 because 10 divided by 3, the answer is 3. 10 divided by 3, the answer is 1. I mean, 10 divided by 3, the answer is 3, remainder 1. 10 divided by 3. 3 divided by 10, the answer is 0, remainder 3. But here, since we are dealing with the whole numbers, we ignore the remainder value. So we also have operator precedency. This is the same as uh, ordinary arithmetic operations. For example, we know we have to do parentheses first. After parenthesis, we come to multiplication, division. Then we come to addition, subtraction. So the same concept here. We here we say that operators can be combined into larger expressions. Example given here is result equal to total plus count divided by mass minus offset. Now we know operator precedence means which operator we have to perform first. Remember, we have a plus, division, and minus. So we have to do division first. So I'll divide count by mass. The answer I'll get it to be plus and minus. So I'll do plus first, then the minus. So here we see operators have a well-defined precedency, which determine the order in which they are evaluated. Multiplication, division, and remainder are evaluated before addition, subtraction, and extreme concatenation. Also, arithmetic operators with the same precedency are evaluated from left to right. So if I have addition, subtraction together, we start from left to right. Same thing, multiplication, division, the same level, we start from left to right. So this is a quick check. We have A plus B plus C plus D plus E. And here they say that in what order are the operators evaluated and follow expression. So here we can see that everything is plus. So I'll just say A is 1, B is 2, 3, 4, 5. And let's see the answer so we can see 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, if I come to this, let's go back. If I come here, we have to be careful because here we have only addition throughout. So the question is straightforward. Here we know we have to do multiplication first, division, then addition, subtraction from left to right. So that's what we have here. Multiplication first, division, then left to right. To the down also, we can see we have a parenthesis as A plus B. 
I mean B plus C. So you get two. Then we get one because this will execute first. The answer we get, then we divide A by that value. So two. The answer we get, we find the mod loss. Then we find the manual stay. We also have the expression trace. Normally, expression tree will start from the bottom up. And here, by looking at the expression, I would say the last operator that was execute will be minus. So B minus six. Then next, we have division by D. So division by D. Then we have again addition. So we can see that here, the order of operation will be B minus C first. Then we divide by D. Then whatever we get finished, we add it to A. So arithmetic operations, sometimes when we get our solution, we're always going to assign the value to another variable on our left side. So here we say the assignment operator has a lower precedence than arithmetic operators. First, the expressions on the right-hand side of the operator is evaluated. So here we have some answer equal to sum divided by four plus mass times lowest. So the first thing I will do here is to do the division because division multiplication from left to right. So sum divided by four. Then we do the next mass and lower set. So here we have count equal to count plus one. This means if I have any value for count, I will add one to it and I will assign the final result to the count variable again. Now we also can have an increment operator. This is called the post increment because we have the count variable before we increment. And then pre means we increment, then we do something with the variable. So count plus plus is functional equivalent to count equal to count plus one. So assignment operator stay we are. So here we say often we perform an arithmetic, an operation on a variable and then store the result back into that variable. And this is what happened here. So I have norm plus equal count. Plus equal means norm equal to norm plus count. So this is a how the, and sometimes we use the term compound operators for this. So S equal to S plus Y is the same as writing S. So S, uh, that, this is the two examples. So S plus equal Y is the same as S equal to S plus Y. Uh, let's go remainder. S remainder equal Y is the same as S equal to S modulus Y. Multiplication will be multiplication. And the right hand side of an assignment operator can be a compressed expression. So example formula, a compressed expression. And the entire right hand expression is, a, is, a, is evaluated first, then the results is combined with the original variable. So here we say if an operands to the plus minus plus equal operator has strings, the assignment operator performs string concatenation. And the behavior of assignment operator, the behavior of an assignment operator is always consistent with the behavior of a corresponding operator. We also have a data convention. For example, I'm working with integer and the final answer was double or float. I may want to change my data type to again 
float or double. So for example, in a particular situation, you may want to tr treat an integer as a floating point value. And this convention do not change. Okay, in this convention do not change the type of variable or the values that store in, in, in it. So in Java, data convention can occur in three ways. It's assignment convention, promotion, and also casting. So data convention, we can see So here we say the assignment convention can when a value of one type is assigned to the variable of another. So here we have dollars and money assigned to twenty and dollars. Promotion will always happen automatically when the operators in the expression convert their operands. So we can see some few examples here. We declare the variable count as int 12. Sum value is given to us, and also sum divided by count will give us the answer. So the cast here we can see float result equal to float total divided by six. What we're trying to do here is that we want to change the data type to float. So the next and the last section is how to get an input from a keyboard. So we use the scanner class. Scanner class provides convenient method for reading input values of various types. And also a scanner object can be set up to read input from a various sources including the user typing values. So this is the synthesis. Scanner, scan, equal to new scanner system, dot in. Another option which you do the same work is use the scan dot next line. So scanner class is part of java.util classes library. So this is an example. Here yeah, they say we should dem demonstrate the use of the next line method of a scanner class to read the string from the user. So here we are going to get the input, so we import the scanner class. We have our main class name scanner our main program name echo. We set our input. And here we can see the variable is message. So we get our scanner object scan. Enter a line of a test, then the scan.next line. So whatever we get as input, we move there. So here we have again one more time, declare variable message, get the input from a scan. Yes, print, enter line of test. Then we have system.i.print, you in entered the message. So let's specify otherwise. White space is used to separate elements. So white space includes space characters, tab, new line, etc. The next method of a scanner class reads the next input token and return it as an output. So methods such as next int and next double can read data of a particular type. So if the data type is int, then you use next int. If it's double, you use next double. So this is another program again. We have a gas marriage main class. We are going to ask the user to enter the fuel efficiency. 
and also the value of the car. So again, here we declare variable miles, gallons, and PG. So we get those three input first. As they start to enter the number of miles, enter gallon of four gallons. So here will be miles divided by gallons. And this is the solution. So I'm going to end here, and this is lecture 2.2. So our main goal here is learning Java expression, especially arithmetic expression. So we know what is a hard subtraction, multiplication, division, and then modulus operator. Actually, we have two. We also discuss the compound operator, like C, equal plus count. It's the same as saying C equal to C plus count. So I'll end here and wish everybody the best. Thank you.